Today we're going to do something a little bit differently. I'm going to do a short tutorial on how to use Fusion 360. I'm going to reverse engineer one of these CO2 cartridges so that you guys can understand how this program works. The first thing you want to do is always know what you want to create. In my case, it's the CO2 cartridge because I'm making 3D printed rockets this summer. I'm using it as a fuel capsule, so I only have to break the seal to launch the rocket. The reason I need this in Fusion 360 is so I can design the rocket around it. Right now, I am measuring all of the parameters of this capsule so I know how to model it. This is a great place to start when you are first learning Fusion 360 because you already have the part in front of you. All you have to do is copy each feature. This is really helpful when you're first learning because you get to learn how all the tools are used to make the part. I will get to the program, but first I just need to get all of the measurements. I recommend to do this step as well so you know exactly how long each part should be. It's really helpful when you need to know a measurement and you don't have to keep going back and forth to the part and to the CAD design program. Try to record as much information as you need so that you don't have to go back because you could always miss something when you're drawing out each of the measurements like how I'm doing. I try to get all the radii of the circles or radiuses. I think they're both okay. I really don't know. And you always want to make sure that you have the lengths and both angles or three angles if something's not cylindrical like this. Once you finally have all of the measurements, you're ready to open up the program. Now I'm going to jump over to Fusion so we can get started. In Fusion, there is a really big learning curve. But once you master the basics, the rest comes very easy. I've only had Fusion for uh, four months maybe, but now after I finished learning all of the basic stuff like keyboard shortcuts and how the mouse actually moves, it makes the program a lot easier. Right now I'm adding in the basic shapes that I have in my sketches with the measurements in them. If you hit R on the keyboard, it opens up the rectangle option in your sketch palette. You can add in the dimensions of the sides and then you can keep going. You have to hit enter a few times to make sure that the dimensions are solid and that they won't move. Next I add in a circle. To do that you can press C or you can press S and type in circle. S opens up your toolbox, and I'll open that up later. Right now, I'm testing to see if the capsule was made of a circle or more of an ellipse shape. In the measurement, I only used a ruler, which was not the most accurate option to use. So to get the right distance, you have to use all of the measurements that you have. Or you could just wing it like I did. If you have a more advanced tool, then you could use that much easier. Usually when you CAD model, there is a lot of trial and error. Right now, I'm putting in the ellipse to see if that worked after I just took out the circle because that did not work. When you press I on your keyboard, it allows you to measure different things on your sketch. Right now, I'm clicking on the ellipse and on the rectangle to see their distance apart. This is very helpful to double check that your measurements are correct on your design or if you need to remeasure the points. I decided to keep the circle because it aligned the best with the actual CO2 capsule. Here I'm adding a few construction lines. A construction line is just a line that you use to measure different things off of. It is not used to design anything. It's just for measurement and it does not affect your design. 
Connecting the diagonals of the rectangle are constructions. They are denoted by a dotted line. The way to create a construction is by clicking on the line and then hitting X. To make a line, all you have to do is press L and then the line tool pops up. It is best to memorize these keyboard shortcuts so you don't have to keep going back to the toolbox. I haven't opened up the toolbox yet, don't worry, it's coming. But for now, I'm just using the keyboard shortcuts. There are plenty of online resources that have a sheet, but you, it's best to just memorize it. You could always put a sticky note on your laptop or computer so you have all of the shortcuts right there if you need it. Right now I'm drawing in the nozzle here. I'm using the measurements that I recorded on the paper to make sure that it is as accurate as possible. All of those lines that show measurements can be done by pressing D for distance. Just click on a line, press the key D, and then it should drag out with a measurement on it. This way you don't have to type in the measurements once you make the rectangle. You could just make a rectangle that's loosely correct and then add in the measurements later. Bam, right there, that's the sketch toolbox. All you have to do is search for, oh, oh, it's gone. Um, I guess I was just looking for the ellipse. Uh, I'll open it back up. All right, so right there, I made an ellipse and put the center point in the midpoint of the rectangle, and then I dragged it out so that the vertice of the rectangle coincides with the ellipse. Hopefully that makes sense. It's right there if you need it, but yeah, that's a mouthful. Now, here's where I go and zoom out so you could see all of it. You can always use the cube in the top right to go back to the top view. Here I press I to double check my work. I can measure all of the parts again to make sure that they're all accurate to the best of my ability with a ruler. If you have a better tool, please use it because a ruler, they're not all made equally. There we go. There's the sketch palette. Uh, sketch palette? What? No, there's the toolbox. As you can see, you could search for anything. Right now, I'm searching for the revolve tool because that's how I'm going to make it cylindrical. Before I can do that though, I need to make one line down the center. Right here, I forgot that it can't be a sketch, I mean a construction, because when it's a construction, it doesn't affect the design at all. So here I try revolve, and you can see if you go down to the bottom, you can pin it to your home bar, I guess. That way, you don't have to search for it every time. Alright, now I'm going to try Revolve, but then I realize that the line can not be a construction, it has to be a line. So I switch it back and then try again. This is because you cannot revolve something if it has two planes like that. It can only be one half of your sketch if you want to use the revolve tool. And here I select the axis for what I'm going to revolve around, and then it automatically assumes that you want it to revolve 360 degrees. As you can see, it creates a new body, and that is the capsule. Here I use the view cube again to get to the right orientation. Then all I have to do is click on the surface that I want to create a sketch on. Right now I just need to push back a little hole that makes the seal inside of the nozzle. For this I just press C to make the circle and then I enter in the measurement that I took on the piece of paper. All I have to do now is click inside of the circle and then cut it into the body. You can either click inside the circle or press E to get open up the extrude menu. 
For this, because you're cutting inside, you want to do a negative number. For this, I just guessed because there's no way of me finding out how deep the seal hole is. I just said it was one millimeter deep. And there you go. I have the capsule all completed. All I need now is a few aesthetics. All you have to do is hit the letter A on your keyboard and it opens up the appearance menu. With this, you could search through all the different types of materials that they have in Fusion. They have wood, glass, and in my case, I used brass. This isn't required for anything. It won't change anything if you manufacture it with 3D printing or cam. It just makes it look cool and you could tell the difference between different parts. Congratulations, you finally completed your first CAD design model with Fusion 360. That's all you have to do. You have to sketch up your first model, extrude it out, and then edit more features into it. You can change the appearance if you want, and then you're ready to make it. Wow, that was a really long video. I hope you guys got something out of it. I mean, I usually make like a three to five minute video, maybe 10 if I make a long video, but this is around 20 minutes, so this is a really big video. Congratulations if you made it all the way through. I hope you guys really understand that you need to memorize the shortcuts to make sure that you'll be able to use this program efficiently. And if you guys want to see what I do with these capsules, then keep watching my videos. In the next video, I'm going to make a little device that will puncture the CO2 capsule and make sure it won't hit me in the face. So thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.